Hello everyone. Welcome to a fourth quarter pre-calculus. We're going to cover statistics and probability. My name is Mr. Grimm. Uh, you may be hearing myself, Mr. Cozy, and Mrs. Ross and present to you video lessons. Here on this page is a quick overview of a project that we would normally do right before spring break, which we would allow you an opportunity to research uh, schools that you might be interested in attending and look at some of their requirements, especially for math credits. Here you can see the University of Akron. The requirements here for business is algebra for calculus, analytic geometry for calculus as well. On this particular page, a student for business has to take business statistics. Over the last few years of doing this project, students have determined in a lot of the cases that they have to take a stats course for part of their undergraduate requirements. Maybe you can use some of, some of the times that you have off to be able to go to the school that you're interested in and that you know that you are going to and look up their undergraduate program and look at the specific course requirements. As you are taking notes today on lesson number one, the items in red and green are of the most importance for you to write down. First thing today, what is the definition of statistics? It is the collection, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting data or data in order to make decisions. So if we were in class, we would be asking you to write down on paper, what is the lifetime of a new cell phone? So hopefully you have come up with your answer. There are a lot of different answers that students provide. Sometimes they will say a year, sometimes we'll say the life of the plan. Some students will even tell us it depends on how much damage is done to the phone. Some of us will even say that our relatives may have had a phone for five years and it still has not broken, so they will continue to use it. So what if we rephrase the question? And do not count for damage. Does that change your answer? Maybe we should talk about the uniqueness of lifetime. It really depends on the item that we are asking the question about. Is one cell phone brand different than another cell phone brand? Are there differences in where the cell phones are made and manufactured? How long do you use it? Every day, all day. So once again, if you have a specific cell phone, does that change the lifetime of it? Each brand, each model, even the manufacturer. So as you can tell, asking the lifetime of a cell phone is very difficult. How about the average? Can you determine the average lifetime of a cell phone? If so, would we test every cell phone? Can we test every cell phone? Or if we didn't want to talk about phones, when we wanted to talk about cars, would it be reasonable to test every single car? This is where we get into the heart of statistics. We have a question. Is that question practical or is it impractical to answer? We have a research question. 
Remember, this, items in red and green are of importance to write down. Population is the group that we have the question about. Maybe we want to talk about all the adults and start counting. We have a parameter as the answer to our research question about the population. Parameters are impossible to answer sometimes. This is why we will take a sample. Samples allow us to make sense of our calculations in a much more smaller size. So instead of testing every single cell phone, can we only test 100 phones and determine the questions that we want to ask and get the results from just those 100? We're going to talk about a sample. A sample is a subset of a population, a smaller amount of the whole thing. So instead of talking about all of the adults in Stark County, a sample would be 205, and those are the only the number of the adults that responded to the survey. Recently, everyone should have received their 2020 population census. So the population would be everyone, every household in the United States. So the sample would be all of those who respond back online and complete the survey. Next is a statistic, it is the answer to our research question for the sample. Sometimes we can talk about the statistic such as being the median. Remember, the median is the most middlemost number of a set. Next up is to talk about the difference between a sample and its population, and that is a sample is taken from a large population. That difference is what we refer to in statistics is called a sampling error. As you can tell, this particular lesson is a lead into some vocabulary words that we will be discussing in more detail in future lessons. Another vocabulary word for today to see on the screen is what is called margin of error. We will get into the specific definition later in our course. There are two main branches of statistics. One is the descriptive. The other is inferential. Let's summarize a little bit of what we've talked about so far, and then we're going to get into some example problems. We have a research question. Difficult to answer. Remember the question about what is the lifetime of a cell phone? From the, our population, we take a sample. We use descriptive statistics to answer that question for the sample. We call that answer to a statistic and use inferential stats to estimate the associated parameter. Due to sampling error that we just talked about, those estimates aren't exact. So they do have what is called a margin of error. Okay, here's an example problem. Now you don't have to write down the example problem itself, but please write down the answers that I'm going to go through to the population in the sample. This will help you on your Schoology assignment number one that you will be completing after watching the video. 
December 2015 survey of 1,000 adults finds that 70% believes the country is headed in the wrong direction. Well, they want to know what is the population and what is the sample. The population for this particular example is all adults in the country. Notice the key thing, all adults in the country. 1,000 adults surveyed is your sample, that numerical value of how many adults actually were surveyed. go ahead and let you read the next example and then we'll talk about the population and the sample. Okay, so what is the population? The population in this particular example. So the answers we were looking for for the population is all adults in the USA all being one of the important words that you will type in when you do your Schoology assignment. In the sample, 2,145 adults that are surveyed. Here's another example with cars. Passenger side collision tests were performed on 11 2015 Ford Focus cars. Results found that a 30 mile per hour impact deformed the door frame an average of 1.1 inches. They want to know what's the population and what's the sample. The population in this scenario is all of the Ford Focus cars. And what's the sample? The 11 cars that were tested. Sometimes we look for the numerical values given to us in the word problem, but in this case, the 30 miles per hour is not representing the sample. So just be careful when you find the answer to the sample size. So here's a quick review. I'll go ahead and let you read through the screen. The following screen is going to tell you about some of the things that your individual intro to pre-calculus teacher will be going through after you submit your Schoology assignments. Please be patient with the original grade that you are going to be seeing or getting. Some of our assignments, your individual pre-calculus teacher will have to go back and hand grade. Schoology will only accept exact answers the way that you have typed them. So if we have a rubric, that is set up and a particular word is missing, Schoology will mark that incorrect. But please don't worry, each of your individual pre-calculus teachers will go back in and regrade your assignment and adjust your score. This will take time for each of us to do this. Please make sure that you stay with us. Please complete your assignments according to the due date and time that you are given. If not, your individual pre-calculus teacher will have to turn your grade into a zero. Upon completion, your score will be changed only after your individual pre-calculus teacher has had the time to go back in and hand grade your late assignment. We ask that each of you take notes during the lessons. These notes will help you with the assignments and the projects that you will be completing. If you are having any trouble, please make sure that you ask us questions during our online office hours. You communicate with us through email. And the biggest thing is that you please get your assignments done at the due date and time. This concludes lesson number one. You may now go ahead and start Schoology assignment number one, and your teachers will be getting with you about their office hours.